Hi friends, good evening and welcome to my channel Mukambika Nursing. Friends, today we can see some questions from Pediatric Nursing. We will see the questions one by one. First question, after a tonsillectomy, a child begins to vomit bright red blood. The initial nursing action is to this is the question and options are option A notify the physician, option B maintain NPO status, option C turn the child to the side and option D administer the prescribed antibiotic. This is the question and our options. Here our question is after tonsillectomy a child begins to vomit bright red color of blood and what is the first nursing action that is our question. So after tonsillectomy, tonsillectomy means the removal of tonsils. So after tonsillectomy if bleeding occurs or if vomiting occurs to the patient the nurse immediately turn the child to side okay immediately the nurse turned the child to side option c and then she should notify the physician so first priority action is turn the child to one side why in order to prevent aspiration and then she should notify the physician and then she can keep nbo status as maintained and also if antiemetic prescribed means she can give to the child but the immediate nursing action is turn the child to one side this will help to prevent aspiration okay that is our question so first action c is correct over here and second she can notify to physician then she can keep to nbo status and then she can administer prescribed antibiotic or prescribed medication as by doctor's order so option c is correct over here next question the second question a child has been diagnosed with acute otitis media of the right ear which intervention should the nurse included in the plan of care this is the question and options are option a position the child on left side option b administer an antihistamine twice daily option c administer acetaminophen for fever every four hours as prescribed and as needed and option d irrigate the right ear with normal saline this is the question and options here our question is the child has been diagnosed with acute otitis media of the right ear. So as a nurse, what in which intervention should, should included in the plan of care? That is the question. So here, acute otitis media is the inflammation of middle ear. It is an infectious disease of the middle ear. So the main manifestations of this otitis media, acute otitis media is fever, pain, loss of appetite and possible ear discharge and also due to this pain and ear discharge the patient or the child will be always irritable and child will be pull or rub the hair rub the hair and she should uh, rub the affected or baby should be or child should be uh, rub the affected side because of the ear discharge and pain so our manifestation main manifestation is fever pain so we should give fever medication first to the patient okay so administer acetaminophen for fever every four hours as prescribed and as needed that is our correct answer for this question and the other options we can see position the child on left side here the child should not be positioned on the left side because there is an ear discharge will come on the ear okay here infection in right ear so we should position the child in right side okay to facilitate ear discharge we should position the child on right side so option a is wrong and also option a is not correct and option b administer antihistamine twice daily this is not significant for this case and option d 
irrigate the right ear with normal saline this is also not correct we should not irrigate it with normal saline because again it will cause inflammation further infection and inflammation so we should not irrigate the ear so option c is correct over here administer acetaminophen for fever every 4 hours as prescribed and as needed The next question third question a nurse is caring for an infant with congenital heart disease he is monitoring the infant closely for signs of congestive heart failure chf the nurse answers the infant for which early signs of congestive heart failure this is the question and options are option a pallor option b cough option c tachycardia option d slow and shallow breathing this is our question here a nurse is caring for an infant infant diagnosis is congenital heart disease and is monitoring the infant closely for chf the nurse answers the infant for which early signs of chf so we have to know what are the early signs of chf then only we can answer this question so what is congestive heart failure means is an inability of the heart to pump a sufficient amount of oxygen to meet the metabolic need of the body that is the definition of congestive heart failure so the heart is unable to pump the sufficient amount of oxygen to meet the metabolic need of the body is called congestive heart failure here the early manifestation of this congestive heart failure include tachycardia tachycardia means increase heart rate especially during rest and slight exertion and also tachypnea increase respiratory rate and profuse scalp diaphoresis especially in infant and also fatigue irritability sudden weight gain and respiratory distress this all the early manifestations of this congestive heart failure the nurse should understand that that these are all the early manifestations so she can immediately find out she can immediately assess the infant okay so our answer option c tachycardia is there that is the correct answer tachycardia especially during rest and slight exertion okay and the other options pallor cough slow and shallow breathing here tachypnea is there and also cough cough may be occurs in congestive heart failure as a result of mucosal swelling and irritation but it is not an early manifestation and the pallor pallor is not significant over here but our option tachycardia is there that is the early that is one of the early clinical manifestations in congestive heart failure so as a nurse if the infant have this congestive heart failure what are the interventions we can plan for this patient so we can uh, monitor early signs and also monitor respiratory distress for count we have to count 1 minute respiration and count 1 minute pulse and also we have to take temperature for the infant and also we have to maintain intake output so weight gain will be there so we have to maintain intake and output and also daily assessment of weight we have to do and uh, we have to give as um, per doctor's order oxygen so if the infant may me we can provide oxygen by oxy oxy hood for young infant and also nasal cannula or face mask for older infant and children and also we can provide small and frequent feeding for the baby and we can uh, administer prescribed medication especially lanoxin for the baby or infant before giving this lanoxin we have to take heart rate for 1 minute these are all some interventions we can do for this congestive heart failure infant or congestive heart failure children this also we have to keep in mind the next question fourth question a nurse is caring for a child with a suspected diagnosis of rheumatic fever the nurse reviews the laboratory result knowing that which laboratory study would assist in confirming the diagnosis this is our question and options are option a immunoglobulin option b red blood cells count option c white blood cells count and option d anti streptomycin o titer so our question is a nurse is caring for 
for a child with diagnosis of rheumatic fever so what is the confirmative test for this rheumatic fever that is in short our question so here what is rheumatic fever we have to know first the rheumatic fever is an inflammatory autoimmune disorder that affect the connective tissues of the heart joint subcutaneous tissue and blood vessels of the central nervous system this is the definition of rheumatic fever and the diagnosis of rheumatic fever is mainly based on jones criteria this jones criteria include major criteria and minor criteria the major criteria include carditis arthralgia chorea erythema marginatum and subcutaneous nodule this all the major criteria for rheumatic fever and the minor criteria include fever arthralgia elevated erythrocyte sedimentation that esr rate and positive c reactive protein this all minor criteria for this rheumatic fever and the diagnosis is mainly the confirmative diagnosis is mainly based on the presence of group b group a strep beta hemolytic streptococcus the causative organism for this rheumatic fever is group a beta hemolytic streptococcus infection and this is an infection of upper respiratory tract so the confirmative diagnosis is mainly for throat culture throat culture of group a strep beta hemolytic streptococcus and also elevated anti streptolysin o titer okay so in our option anti streptolysin o titer is there that is option d it is correct over here so the main confirmative diagnosis for this rheumatic fever is positive throat culture or increased anti or elevated anti streptolysin o titer and also the diagnosis is mainly based on this criteria jones criteria jones criteria major criteria and minor criteria is there if in major criteria two major or one major criteria is present means it is rheumatic fever in minor criteria if you are taking two minor manifestation is present means this is also a chance for rheumatic fever here our question the which is the confirmative diagnosis of this rheumatic fever so option d and the streptolysin o titer is correct and immunoglobulin red blood cells and white blood cells is not correct it is not related to this question mainly this rheumatic fever is diagnosed on the basis of jones criteria and culture throat culture and elevated and the streptolysin o titer okay the next question a nurse is preparing for the admission of a child with diagnosis of acute stage kawasaki disease on assessment of the child the nurse expect to note which clinical manifestation of the acute stage of this disease this is the question and the options are cracked lips option b normal appearance option c conjunctival hyperemia option d desquamation of the skin here the nurse is preparing for the admission of acute stage we have to focus on the stage acute stage of kawasaki disease and which is the clinical manifestation of this acute stage of disease that is our question so we have to know what is kawasaki disease kawasaki disease is an acute systemic inflammatory disorder and is also known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome so this kawasaki disease is also known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome and this disease is progress into three stage first one acute stage second one sub acute stage and third one convalescent stage here our question is from acute stage so the symptoms of acute stage include fever congenital hyperemia red throat swollen hand rash enlargement of cervical lymph node this are the manifestation in acute stage and sub acute stage manifestations include cracking the lips and fingers desquamation of the skin of the tip of fingers and toes joint pain cardiac manifestations thrombocytopenia thrombocytosis is the 
manifestation in subacute stage and convalescent stage the child appears normal in convalescent stage but the signs of inflammation may be present okay these are the three stages of this kawasaki disease so here our question is which manifestation clinical manifestation in acute stage of kawasaki disease the acute stage manifestations include fever congenital hyperemia so here congenital hyperemia is there that is option c is our correct answer congenital hyperemia red throat swollen hand rash and enlargement of cervical lymph node this is the acute stage manifestation here remaining all the manifestation of subacute stage so our question is what are the clinic which is the clinical manifestation in acute stage of kawasaki disease option c congenital hyperemia is correct congenital hyperemia means it is one of the inflammation of the congenital